In a previous video here, I showed you how you can train your own Stable Diffusion XL LoRa file, low rank adaptation file, that helps Stable Diffusion render new and interesting characters, objects, places, even styles. And we did it completely free using Google Colab, meaning you don't need your own powerful Windows desktop gaming computer. But after you've created that LoRa file, how do you actually use it? What do you do if you don't have a machine that can run Stable Diffusion locally? Well, that's where Focus comes in. Focus is one of my favorite projects because they've made Stable Diffusion really simple and easy to use. In fact, I'm gonna do an entire tutorial how-to on running this end-to-end, -end. but for today, we really wanna focus in on how to do this in Google Colab. The idea behind Focus was to make Stable Diffusion as easy to use as mid-journey, and I think they've done a really fantastic job of this. It abstracts away a lot of the crazy inner workings that you normally have to deal with in specialized prompting techniques. And right on their GitHub page, when you scroll down, you'll see this open in Colab link. Go ahead and click on that. The first thing you're gonna do when you come here is you're gonna click on connect up in this upper right hand corner. And when you're done, it's gonna give you this T4. This gives you basically a GPU instance in Google Colab. So this will have a GPU with enough memory to run stable diffusion and it'll have enough RAM and disk space for you to do all kinds of cool stuff. Once that's connected, go over here and just click this play button on the left here. I was gonna tell you that this Colab notebook wasn't authored by Google, that's okay. Go ahead and click run anyway. And then you're gonna see that it's actually installing focus right now on this instance. So that'll take just a minute to do. Once it's all done and everything's loaded, you're gonna see two URLs at the bottom. They'll say app started successful, Use the app with 127.001. This is a loopback address, it's a local address. You can't actually use that because you're not on the same network as the Colab machine. And then it'll also give you this gradio.live address. This is what you can actually use. So click on that, and this is gonna load up the Focus UI. And you can see, here it is. We've got our own stable diffusion software running in the cloud. So we can say, Let's generate an image and just test it out. We'll say house by a stream down here in the text box and we'll click generate. And just like that, here are our first two images. And you can see, even though my prompt was super simple, house by a stream, the results are very high quality. This is almost photographic quality. And that's because Focus does a whole bunch of fine tuning and tweaking on the back end in order to make your images stand out. If you put this into standard stable diffusion software like Automatic 11.11, you're gonna to have to do a lot more tweaking and tuning to get this high a quality result. Now from here, we can dive into the advanced settings. Click on advanced, and that's gonna open up this side panel that has a whole bunch of other options. You can select different dimensions and aspect ratios for the images generated, change the number of images generated, and even enter a negative prompt. Performance, I typically like to jump this up to quality, unless I'm just testing things out. And then you can jump over to style. This is where you can set a bunch of different preset styles that modify the way that images look. Let's show you, for example, we'll go ahead and deselect the three that are on by default and we'll select origami instead. We'll click generate. We won't change our prompt at all. And just like that, our house by a stream looks like it's made out of folded paper origami style. Pretty freaking cool. Next up, we're gonna go over to the model tab. Now by default, this is running the juggernaut XL. Stable Diffusion model, this is based on SDXL or Stable Diffusion Extra Large. It's a fine-tuned model that has a bunch of extra features built in that make it look a little bit better than SDXL. The results are a little bit higher quality. You can also select the refiner, so you could go with the Juggernaut XL refiner as well. That just fine-tunes the images after they get to about 80 or 90% of the way generated. You'll also notice that there's a LoRa section, and by default it has this SDXL offset example LoRa. Well, how do you get your LoRa file to show up here? Let's take a look at that. And for this, we need to jump back over to the Colab section. So we jump back over here, and you'll notice this icon on the left here is a file folder. Click on that, and you'll see a focus directory. Drop that down and find the model section. Open that, and within there, you're gonna see LoRa's. Drop that down, and you're gonna see the section that says put LoRa's here. And with that directory selected, I'm gonna go up here and go to upload to session storage. Select your LoRa file, and then you'll see down here at the bottom, it's actually uploading. That'll take just a minute. Now, it left it in the sample data folder. It didn't actually put it in the LoRa folder. So when it's done, go to the very bottom here, click on the file, and then you can just drag it up to the LoRa's directory. 
Perfect. So now we've got this PyTorch Lore Awaits file. I still need to rename that. It's a terrible name, but you get the idea. You've got it here in the Lores folder. Now we can jump back into focus. Click at the bottom, this refresh all files. And now you'll see your Lora file is showing up in the dropdown. So select PyTorch Lora weight safe tensors, and then drag this weight up to just about one. Perfect. Go back to style and we're going to deselect origami and I'll go with MRE dark cyberpunk. For the prompt, you're going to need to use your prompt trigger word. So for mine, it's Tom Cruise man. That's all you need to do. Let's click generate. And just like that, we're using our custom Lora file and we're generating stable diffusion images with it. Now, if you wanted to, you could also upload different checkpoint models. So you could change out Juggernaut XL for stable diffusion XL or any other variation you want. Similar to what we did before, you jump back over here and you would just upload into the, instead of the Lora's directory, you'd upload into the models directory and then place it under checkpoints. That's really all you have to do. You'll notice that down here on the disk, you've got 43, 44 gigabytes available. So you've got plenty of space to upload additional files. Now, one thing to note, this will time out and actually stop and all of the files that exist in here are gonna get deleted. So make sure if you've got anything cool, like you like one of these images, that you right click on it and you actually save the image before it all gets destroyed and lost. Outside of those caveats, really cool way to get started using Stable Diffusion without your own hardware and PC. Now, if you do need to run Focus locally, it'll run on as little as four gigabytes of VRAM. So you can have a fairly old video card and still run it without a problem. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'm always here to help. Hit me up in the comments and I'll be doing that deep dive on Focus in another video coming up soon. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town, breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All Your Tech AI, earning the renown.